for today's event. Um, it really helps us to put on um, events like that. So, so a big thank you to both um, of them. Um, now, just by way of um, intro, um, I just thought it was kind of worth picking out a couple of moments in time um, just to sort of set the stage, I guess, for the discussions that we're having. So if you rewind back to spring, summer last year, um, during uh, lockdown one, although we didn't know it was lockdown one at the time, um, young people were being really hit very hard by the economic effects of the pandemic. And you really had a double whammy uh, of disrupted education and also um, of a, an affected labour market. And young people were hit hardest um, by that labour market because uh, they were most likely to work in sectors affected by the lockdown, in particular retail and hospitality. So you had this big fall in employment for young people and a disrupted um, education. So that's kind of where we, where we started uh, last, last year. If you fast forward to today, um, employment is bouncing back. Um, young people's employment has, has, has bounced back, um, I think, faster than, than many other um, age groups. Um, and uh, we've seen participation in education for 16 and 17 year olds and also 18 to 24 year olds rise um, during the pandemic. And that's probably assuming it's a good quality education option that, that suits um, their ambitions. That's a good thing because we had lower participation in education than many countries before the pandemic. So um, I guess the subtitle of today's event is, is it, is it job done? Um, question mark. Employment's recovering participation in education's uh, rising, so are we all sorted? You'll be unsurprised, um, given that we've uh, put on this event today, that our answer is no. Um, there's still loads more to do. And I guess there's a, a couple of areas that I wanted to focus on uh, before we move on to the, the event as a whole. So firstly, yes, we're recovering from the economic effects of the, uh, of the pandemic, but um, there's still lots of that damage to recover. So employment for young people still below where it was before the pandemic and some groups of young people particularly um, still harder hit or, or more affected. So young people aren't one amorphous uh, mass. Um, so the geography and the demography of this really matters as well. So there's much more to do there. Um, so much more of that sort of catch up and recovery um, to do. And I guess we've got a generation of young people who've had two once in a lifetime events really with the great financial crisis, the global financial crisis of 2008 um, and then the pandemic. So we need to make sure that doesn't or we minimise the long term effects on those generations um, of, of those events. So there's still a sort of recovery uh, job to do. Um, we'll talk um, through the course of today about some of the measures the government introduced. I think there were loads of good things there but also some challenges in delivery and, and joining uh, things up. That's one of the reasons we argued for a young person's guarantee to make sure every young person gets a job, training place or apprenticeship offered to them. Um, so there's a kind of delivery point um, as well as um, a recovery point. But then also, if you rewind back to before the pandemic, if, if anyone can remember um, such a time, it feels like a lifetime ago now, um, we were talking at the time about um, young people hit by that financial crisis I was talking about. Um, also challenges of social mobility because your chances of getting a good education and a good job are far too dependent on your parents' qualifications and income. And that's a sort of 30, 40, 50 year um, issue. So we need to improve social mobility so everyone gets a fair chance in life. As I said, we had lower participation in education than, um, than many other countries. So we needed to improve that, particularly vocational um, education and um, um, we'll, we'll maybe talk a bit about T levels and the extent to which that will um, help to close that gap. Um, so it wasn't um, like we were fine before the pandemic, nothing to do. So I think the discussion today, we've got an amazing lineup, as I say, really focused on how's delivery of all those initiatives in, in the plan for jobs and, and things like that going, are there things we can do to join things up and improve them? How do we complete the job of recovery from the pandemic because we're, we're definitely not there yet um, and how do we actually um, I try not to use the phrase build back better because everyone's using it but uh, how, how do we um, think about some of those challenges that we had before the pandemic and all of that's in quite an uncertain context we don't quite know where the pandemic will go next we've got changes to the economy going on as a result of um, technology but also you know Brexit is changing some of the the structure of the economy um, as well. So there's lots of 
stuff going on in the background as well. So if we can try and sort all of that out in the next few hours, that'd be amazing. So good luck to everyone. Um, but without further ado, I'm going to pass across to uh, Sam Windet, our Deputy Director, who's going to introduce the first session along with our co-host, uh, Josh Adcock as well. So Sam, over to you. Thank you very much, Stephen. It's a tall order for today, but I'm, I'm no doubt that we can crack it together. Uh, so I'm Sam Windet, Deputy Director at the Learning and Work Institute. I'm also co-founder and co-chair of the Youth Employment Group, which I'm sure you will hear about during this event. Uh, I am co-hosting this event with Josh, uh, who I, I will pass over to in a second. Uh, I've billed us as the kind of Anton Deck of the youth employment world, but I'm not quite sure which one is which. Uh, I'll let you guys all decide. Uh, you can talk about that and other things on our hashtag, which is hashtag youth employment 21. Please do feel free to tweet during the day, not just about whether I'm Ant or whether I'm Deck. Um, I'm going to briefly run through the agenda. You should all have received it through email, but always good to know what you're in for. Uh, so first of all, we're going to kick off with uh, the keynote speech from the Minister for Employment, who we're really delighted to be with us today. Uh, and uh, all through the day, we're, you're going to be able to pose your questions to all the speakers. So get your fingers ready to be typing away and sending your questions in to everybody. After the keynote, we've got the first panel where we'll be looking at the picture both regionally and locally around youth unemployment and skills. Really important to uh, have that panel talking about what the picture is across the country. Uh, and after that, we'll have a, a little break. We'll have a coffee and a stretch. And then we will have our second panel where we will uh, have employers. So employers talking about how they've gone beyond business as usual, what it's been like during the pandemic, what are the opportunities and challenges for young people in terms of recruitment, in terms of upskilling and supporting them in their businesses. Uh, we then go straight into our breakouts and we have a range of different topics in the breakouts, which uh, hopefully a smorgasbord uh, of different topics for you to choose from, from youth hubs uh, to apprenticeships and traineeships, uh, educational careers, uh, we've got um, flexible delivery, so moving online during the pandemic, one of the topics there, uh, and, I, and uh, disadvantaged groups. So um, those uh, joining instructions are all in your email, different joining for each of those Zooms. We then have another break where you can stretch your legs, have a cup of coffee, and then we're into our last keynote of the day. Really pleased as well to be joined by uh, the, the mayor of Liverpool City Region at the end, and we will wrap up. So we will be with you throughout the day, as they say, and we will be trying to make this, this all happen. Uh, so Josh, over to you. Thanks, Sam. Uh, good morning, all. It's, it really is a pleasure to be here today. Um, so I'm, I'm Josh Adcock. I work for a company called Youth Employment UK, um, and I'm a policy and research apprentice. Um, so just a bit of background on Youth Employment UK quickly. It's an independent, non-for-profit social enterprise, and it was founded in 2012 to tackle youth unemployment off the back of the last um, economic crisis in 2008. Um, so something I wanted to share with you today was our, our Youth Voice Census um, is something that I work closely with our, our director, um, Lauren Mystery. And um, this is a flagship piece of research and it captures the voices of young people um, across the UK on a range of topics. Um, it's, it is weighted and it looks at place-based um, questions, time in education, training and employment. And there's four key findings from it this year, um, which are really, some of them are quite stark and some of them um, not so much, but the, the, I'll just run through those very quickly. So there's growing mental health concerns. Um, in the census, anxiety, depression and mental health featured in the top five responses of barriers um, to finding employment um, or struggles in work. Um, and that was featured across all ages, all stages. So mental health is a, is a big thing for young people. Um, we also had catching up. So not just in education and training, but just missed interactions and life moments that help them define who they are. Um, Young people are struggling to access quality work. Only 9.9% believe um, and are confident that they'll be able to find quality work. Um, and young people also feel there isn't a space for them. And again, this is in, in several ways in the sense that they don't think there's opportunity to, to share their issues. So that was 81.9% who thought that. And others refer to a lack of physical space to learn and having to share devices. Um, so they're just four key challenges that I think we, we should have in mind when we're discussing what young people, the challenges that they've faced um, across this time. One of my colleagues is watching today and I'm hopeful that he's gonna share some links for you. Um, and then 
Youth Employment UK is another co-chair of the Youth Employment Group, um, and, and Sam's introduced that. So we'll move on then to our final role, uh, which is the Secretary for the ABBG for Youth Employment. Um, and, and that has looked at a range of topics, and this year we're looking at vocational um, education. So um, next up is to introduce the poll. So today we're going to have uh, lots of opportunity for you guys to share and feed in your views throughout the event. Um, so this poll um, is going live as I speak. Um, and we'd like you to answer the questions um, from your perspective. Do you think the job is done in terms of skills and employment support for young people? Have we done enough? Um, can we sit back and take the foot off the pedal or is there more that needs to be done? Um, so please see the options available on your screen and let us know what you think. And we'll be back at the end of the day to, to explore those results and, and see what you guys have said. Um, and then finally, I'm just going to, it's my pleasure to introduce um, Mims Davies, who is the Parliamentary Under Secretary of State for Employment. Um, and she's here with us today to reflect on the last 18 months and the challenges that people have faced in the labour market. Um, Youth Employment UK and the Youth Employment Group are privileged to have worked with Mims over the past 18 months. Um, from receiving the APPG report, um, which looked into making youth employment policy work, um, to sitting in many a round table um, with young people from the Youth Voice Forum, which is part of the YEG. Um, and to hear their challenges and meeting with the EG chairs too on, on numerous occasions and working really closely with the civil service teams in the DWP too. Um, so we've been, we've been privileged to work with NIMS as, as I've said, and it's been a pleasure to have a minister um, so willing to, to listen to young people. So without further ado, NIMS, over to you. Thank you very much, Josh. And it, it's lovely to join you all uh, this morning from Caxton House. Um, I'm an unashamed bore when it comes to supporting people and caring about our young people. And uh, to the point that I think people run away <laughs> in the House of Commons and know that I'm going to be talking about this. So thank you so much for inviting me to this really important event. It's brilliant to be uh, back together discussing a really important issues for our young people. And I I really do thank the, the Learning and Work Institute for bringing uh, this community of partners uh, together today. Now, I know everyone here does share that deep commitment to changing the lives of young people and helping them secure training, employment opportunities and all they need to succeed. With the UK economy rebounding so strongly, the number of payrolled employees is now above pre-pandemic levels and vacancies are pleasingly too at a record high. Our unprecedented £407 billion support package protected jobs and livelihoods through the worst of the pandemic. With the uh, furlough scheme, the coronavirus job retention scheme, be scheme being set up uh, to retain employees through the pandemic and support them with nearly 12 million people supported. And also crucially, in 2021, hundreds of thousands of young people have also, through this, received vital support to maintain their connection with the labour market through this scheme. We've also implemented a series of measures through the Plan for Jobs to deliver important employment and skills support to people as the economy reopened and we learned what we knew had changed during the pandemic. Now, this included uh, bringing in our Kickstart scheme and the new enhanced DWP youth offer, which has helped hundreds of thousands of young people access the labour market. Now, this support has helped to ensure the recovery from the pandemic has pleasingly been strongest amongst the under 25s and we need to get that message out there. In August 2021 there was a more than uh, there were 400,000 more young people employed than in January this year. So uh, the reality is the economy is bouncing back fully and young people are able to make uh, the most of opportunities and the high number of vacancies that are available. But whilst we're um, successfully managing to avoid the very high unemployment levels that were anticipated, let's be honest, young people have been hit hard by the significant interruption to their working lives, 
caused by the pandemic and of course the impact to their well-being and that's why it's not just job done just yet in terms of our support and offer to young people and it can't be so that's why we'll be building cross government a strong foundation of employment and skill support so that they can progress in work and thrive in the labor market wherever they are wherever they live whatever they look like etc let's not have nobody held back and that in that spirit of no one being left behind let's not be afraid of holding us to account on terms of building back better now uh, Stephen let's not be afraid of that phrase uh, we've announced our plan for jobs expansion which will see another 500 million pounds crucially invested in supporting people into further jobs especially again with young people at the heart of this through kicks start and our DWP youth offer. Now the government's plan for jobs is focused on protecting and supporting and creating jobs across England, Scotland and Wales and it provides a skills and employment offer which allows people to crucially adapt and pivot into the job roles that employers need to fill too. And we are serious about investing in our young people's futures. We're delivering this in collaboration with the Department for Education, our devolved governments, employers and all partners. Now, our DWP youth offer will allow the next generation to absolutely bounce back and meet the economic challenge. And it provides support through the DWP Youth Employment Programme, through a specialised youth employability uh, group of work coaches, directly there for young people to focus on those additional barriers to work, as well as our new youth hubs, which are being delivered locally. Now, uh, during this initial delivery phase, we pri prioritise uh, offer of support for all 18 to 24 year olds on universal credit uh, and those in the uh, intensive work search groups across Great Britain. Uh, but of course, you know, we are, we are very much aware that not everyone will, will be in that category. But the Chancellor has indicated in his recent plan for jobs uh, and his expansion announcement um, and he's absolutely sure that our youth offer has been recognised and that's why that's been the heart of the recent conversations. So the government commitment to this now extends to 2025, as well as expanding the eligibility into 16 and 17 year old um, universal credit claimants in that intensive work search uh, group as well, so that we can get more people, more support from that tailored offer. And of course, that could mean 16 year old care leavers for example. Now, underpinning all of this is our amazing DWP work coaches, uh, who I know work so hard to help us really bounce back that economy locally. Now, overall, DWP has doubled the number of our work coaches, many of those joining the organisation who've been through exactly the same job trauma and impact as our claimants. And it means that we've been opening up new temporary job centres to provide new sites where we can bring more opportunities of getting people together to support them to get back into work and support their local community. Now, on the 6th of October, Maidstone, where I uh, was really pleased to be, became our 100th additional temporary job centre to open its doors with 177 extra temporary job centre premises secured so far. There's a lot of plaques with my name out there. Uh, wasn't expecting this when doing this role, but I'm absolutely delighted in each and every one that I go to. The commitment, particularly to our young people in the community of the difference these sites and these extra work coaches will make. So they are high quality, modern, digitally enabled environments for both DWP colleagues, customers and employers uh, to be in. And we are reducing our environmental impact as well by taking on great buildings and making sure that we're in the right place for people to come and find us. Now, through our youth offer and the 13 week um, youth employment programme, our work coaches have the crucial personalised intensive support for our young people. 
really helping them to identify transferable skills, get that winning CV and get them confident. Now, young people are encouraged to take part in a wide range of work based opportunities. And I'll talk about some of them today, including our kickstart placements, the sector based work academy programs, traineeships, work experience and crucially apprenticeships. Now, our work coaches can also make use of access to work, our boosted flexible support fund, all of this to help make sure that if there are any barriers, they're overcome and people of all ages are not prevented from finding that great job. Now, it's really important as well to hear directly from young people. And I'm really pleased that that is at the heart of the event today. Listening to them, engaging with them and working with organisations that work with them, know and understand them and give them a voice is crucial. Now, we, alongside our work coaches, have been told and we know it's the mental health and well-being worry that many young people have, the lack of work experience and network, which our young people really worry about. And there are real areas of concern, as Josh sadly had to outline for us. But our fantastic GWP work coaches are really helping people to find ways to address these barriers and really boost and improve their outcomes. Now, our youth employability coaches are tailoring support to young claimants with complex needs or those who may face additional barriers to work so that they are not left behind. We've reorganised our uh, work coaches so that we have a, a targeted group of people working with the under 25. They also work alongside our disability employment advisors who specialise in helping claimants who have any disability or some kind of health condition. Now, our enhanced and boosted new youth hubs are a central plank of what we are doing at DWP as our youth offer, providing those additional vital links into the community and really help reaching more young people. These are a real joint endeavour, bringing together partners from employment and skills sectors, training providers, youth charities, DWP, councils, everyone across local communities supporting the transition of young people into work and getting into the nub of any challenges they have. Now, youth hubs are co-located and they use a local approach as a kind of one-stop shop in a youth-friendly, supportive environment. Now, I've been visiting the hubs, uh, Southampton, uh, Hull, Ibrox, Rotherham, Brighton just last week, speaking and listening to work coaches and partners and the young people within them and seeing just firsthand what a difference they're doing and what they're actually doing in terms of meeting young people's needs. And these youth hubs, as I say, have very varied settings from community centres to libraries to local authority uh, premises to colleges to local football clubs it's all locally led and we have over 135 youth hubs now open nationally with at least one in every JCP district from Accrington to Birmingham to Cardiff to Dundee to Westminster to Wakefield to Woking I am told though we are a bit slack on the y's and z's uh, as we stand but we are getting around the country and doing uh, as much as we can uh, led locally. Now, hearing direct from our fantastic partners and these diverse youth hubs across England, Scotland and Wales is showing the brilliant examples of partnerships which are changing the routeways for our young people and crucially the outcomes for our young people. Now, from our youth hub partners, using uh, perhaps sport to engage young people to improve their confidence, uh, to partnerships having that brilliant success where we're working with care leavers or youth offenders or people in danger of going neat. We are building a foundation for engagement, which enables young people to thrive and importantly progress into work. Now, in many areas, DWP youth hubs are helping employers to fill those kickstart roles too bringing young people crucially face to face with their local employers and securing those really exciting opportunities. Now, youth hubs are a place where group sessions, mentoring circles are run uh, for young people to meet and understand how to secure that next step. It's also a place to go and have a coffee uh, and a chat. And they are really making a difference and really show how we can uh, achieve more by working together in local areas based on the local economy's needs. Now, moving on from our flagship youth employment support program, moving on to our rather, I should say, flagship um, youth employment support program, the Kickstart Scheme. 
blimey, it's been giving us grey hairs, but it's well worth it. Um, in recognition of this really significant challenge for our young people, as we really started to see the impact of the global pandemic, the kickstart programme was stood up as a, a result of the first announcement of Plan for Jobs. And it's really made a significant difference in creating new jobs across hundreds of sectors across Great Britain. Now, the scheme has already supported many young people who have had uh, the confidence and ability to take that first step in their careers and where Kickstart's been right for them. And I'm absolutely delighted to be able to say that we've now seen over 85,000 young people start a Kickstart role, despite the tears and lockdowns and all of the other uh, issues we've had. This is alongside over 204,000 jobs that have been made available across DWP for young people to apply for and over 307,000 jobs which we've approved as kickstart roles. So let's remind young people about those amazing opportunities that are out there. Now, as the Chancellor has announced earlier this month, we are extending our kickstart scheme through to the 31st of March 2022. So this will mean that young people at risk of long-term unemployment with the biggest barriers will continue to be able to start kickstart jobs uh, until the end of March, giving them uh, up to six months after that. So giving them then the additional employment support, the work experience, and more importantly, these amazing and great job opportunities in their communities. Now, this includes those created by BAE with major engineering projects to those from the Diamond Centre in Carl Shulton, where they've created jobs jobs to help support disabled people. The range of jobs has been incredible and I'd like to take this opportunity to thank employers and organisations up and down the land who've come together to work with us on the Kickstart scheme. Now as we uh, begin to close the uh, scheme for new applications in December, I do urge employers to continue to offer their support, not just to the young people on the scheme, to all young job seekers through the government's youth offer. And also to you know fill those jobs, be realistic about the expectations that you have on the young people. You know, don't ask for the moon when it comes to CVs or confidence or experience. And we know that we want young people to be there as the economy opens up and that young people finding jobs uh, will they'll be able to do this on the open labor market that's fantastic news but we absolutely need to make sure we're filling those kickstart roles for those that it's right for and that is testament and a commitment to build back better now one such young person i've met is molly through the kickstart scheme she's now got a permanent position at the northam um, care trust helping young people with disabilities whilst also um building her experience in work. I met one young guy very recently on his first, pretty much first day at Pinewood Studios. I've heard six months later he's going freelance in the film industry as planned. The stories out there are simply brilliant and employers uh, and gateways should be delighted with what they're delivering. Now, Kickstart, though, could not have been delivered without the support of employers across the country. Really keen to do their bit in the wake of the pandemic. And while Kickstart and the Youth Offer is centre of our provision for helping young people here at DWP, it also sits in that broader offer that we have regarding jobs. And we have launched also our £2.9 billion restart scheme, which will offer a fresh start for more than a million people who've been unemployed for over 12 months. And I recently saw some of the impact in Worthing and in D Brighton and what kicks and uh, what restart is meaning to, to those people. And the plan for jobs from the Chancellor's expansion also means that we are extending JETS, our job entry targeted support scheme. This is through till September 2022. Over 40,000 people have already been helped back into employment through this scheme. And it provides a light touch support for people uh, around six months unemployed, either claiming a universal credit or new style job seekers allowance, 
who've been unemployed for at least 13 weeks or more. And this does include eligible young people. And it's around that six months point that it starts to bite, that you're not getting anywhere on your own. You need that extra help. And at the start of the year, we launched the job finding support service uh, for England, Wales and Scotland to provide support for newly unemployed people in that first 13 weeks of uh, need. And that's really, again, light touch, digital support, help with CVs, boosting confidence confidence extra and over to what our work coaches do and over 30,000 people of all ages have been supported by JFS through that online one-to-one support for those newly unemployed including recruitment advice working with a skilled advisor that crucial support regarding CVs and having a mock interview which you know can be really important if you haven't done one for some time or never done one before and claimants of all ages have the opportunity Opportunity to gain new skills with the significant expansion of our sector-based work academies. These are swaps, they're available in England and Scotland and offer training, work experience and most importantly a guaranteed interview for a real job in the sector that you're learning about uh, and any certificates that you might need along the way, for example in hospitality or care. Now key to this is our work in partnership again with employers and training providers to uh, provide real opportunities across all sectors of importance and to make sure that we are meeting that local employer need, that we are including priority sectors with high volumes of current vacancies, including construction, hospitality, logistics, freight, care, you name it. If people are needed and they've got jobs, we can do swaps for them. Now, as part of our commitment to education and skills, my department is working alongside other government departments to join up provision, which is always an ask, and particularly with DfE on skills, training ships, training ships apprenticeships, um, everything that people have been asking for, we're absolutely focused on in terms of this join up. So we are supporting the largest ever expansion of traineeships by investing a further 126 million to fund further 43,000 opportunities uh, in 21-22 and extending incentive payments to employers to help more people of all ages, including young people, access those high quality training and apprenticeship opportunities and really dovetailing where possible that kickstart scheme in there as well. Earlier this year, I launched a new adventure, DWP Train and Progress. So it's DWP TAP. It's an initiative to further align our government's employee and skills support for universal credit claimants. At the core of this, It means reinforcing the need for understanding, addressing the skills needs of our claimants as we help them be ready to re-enter and progress in their employment. It means that we can support them, for example, alongside the boot camps that DfE lead on. Our job centre work coaches as well are very much engaged with National Career Service. They're linking into devolved administration equivalents. We're developing innovative and vital approaches is to capture claimant skill levels and better understand their skills gaps. It's something we've been asked for and we are on it. Now, a key component for DWP Train and Progress is that expansion of the flexibility to refer universal credit claimants onto longer learning courses. And this can really help them uh, in achieving their career goals and in, crucially in terms of earning more and filling those employment gaps. And this additional flexibility, I can announce, here and now has now been extended to the end of April 2022. It means that UC claimants are now in an even better position to access uh, sector specific training as part of DfE's lifetime skills guarantee and the skills boot camp initiatives. It allows people across Great Britain to take part in work related training to get them those key skills and be ready with them for what employers really value and need and of course we'll continue to deliver our demand-led and extremely well-supported support for schools program providing that early intervention and target for people between 12 and 18 in England 
of course, those most at particular risk of moving out of education or training uh, as a result of going neat. So this is really important for us to do at DWP. And so we've got some great foundations today and I've set out in uh, the plan for jobs, for example, our absolute commitment to invest in skills and jobs. Hundreds of thousands of people further will be supported as part of that £500 million extension. And any workers who've been left on furlough, who are not being back at work, we're going to help them navigate and take their next step in their careers. We're gonna really help them progress through Plan for Jobs. Our existing schemes for young unemployed people have been extended to help young people really fulfill their potential. And at the core of this is our partnership working. DWP is out there in communities, building up local partnerships, which are actually crucial for delivering to young people. I know there's a department for leveling up, but I think DWP are pretty good at doing that already in, in our circles and more of this please. So we're jointly working with a range of stakeholders with that shared goal of making sure that young people are able to access the right provision at the right time. We are working cross government with employers and providers, youth services and partners to make this happen. And this is really helping us to better understand the needs of young people, better understand the barriers to employment and really actually get over them and deliver opportunities for their careers. We want to hear what's working well, and there are things that you might want us to, to do differently. And we do need to listen and learn as we continue to understand the impacts of the pandemic. Keep working together to make sure that our support is aligned with asks and that we continue to work with each other. So, of course, there's more to do. Those who know me, I know that you know I'm passionate about getting this right. All of us share this real commitment to making a positive difference to young people. Now, statistics, they are young people in each and every community. And we need to you know, turn around any challenges and make sure that we're having a great impact on young people's lives. And through events like this and our ongoing relationships, we can really further secure a recovery where young people are included they're confident and optimistic about their future and that they feel that they're in the heart of it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister, for a fulsome and, and good gallop through everything that's been happening over the last 18 months and what we are what we can look forward to uh, over the coming months. There's been questions coming in and I know we've got you for a few more minutes, so uh, I'm going to use those wisely, I hope. I'm going to pose one, then, then Josh can pose one and we can see if there's more from the audience. Um, you briefly mentioned... Minister, about uh, the, the join up across government. And it's good to hear about some of that join up with boot camps and extending the, the training and uh, good to hear about that extension till April 2022 that you announced uh, during your speech. Um, you touched on the levelling up agenda. So I am just going to take the chair's uh, uh, responsibility to ask with the levelling up agenda and the changes across government departments that we've recently seen with the reshuffle. Uh, what's your role in the levelling up agenda and what do you see as being you know, the chances for uh, youth employment and skills as part of that levelling up agenda? So obviously, uh, thank you, Sam, and thanks so much for the invite and all the work that you do. It's it's a pleasure to work with, with the sector and um, and I, I really do mean it, but um, working together and the insight you give us is, is absolutely crucial. So the levelling up agenda, and I was sort of teasing about how much uh, Deluxe or however you pronounce it, um, it, is leading into this agenda and rightly so, but, you know, we are uh, a department that operates and, and, and is in each and every community and knows and understands it. So in future, of course, we'll be working jointly together um, with the UK Shared Prosperity Fund um, to really make sure that those people who face the biggest barriers of getting into the labour market are, are dealt with. You know, very conscious we only see, you know, some people. There's a lot of hidden people that the Shared Prosperity or previous funds have, have looked into. Now, a portion of the fund will target areas most in need of the uh, UK for 
for example, ex-industrial areas, deprived towns, rural and crucially coastal communities. And the second portion of the fund will be targeted differently at people most in need of bespoke employment and skills programmes tailored to that local need. And again, it will be support to uh, make sure that there's improved employment outcomes for those who face the, the largest uh, barriers of coming into the labour market. So there's a place portion and a people portion, and we'll be working very strongly cross government and with uh, the Department for Leveling Up to make sure that it works for us and our claimants and those that we don't see here at DWP. Lovely. So Mims, we've got another great question from the audience about Kickstart. So you spoke quite a lot about Kickstart um, just now. Um, and and this, this particular question says that uh, Kickstart is great, but um, it's not reaching young people who aren't on universal credit. And that is a, a major gap. So what are the plans to address this? And just to, to give a bit of context there too, with some data that we've got from the Youth Voice Center, Census is that a lot of young people think these services like um, NCS and, and the job centers aren't applicable to them. So 37.7% of, of young people who had been neat had only engaged with the with the job centre, and again another thirty seven point one percent of those who were um, who 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 were neat said that it wasn't applicable to them, and it rises to fifty seven point seven for the NCS. So, but just to go back to the question is, uh, what are the plans to address the gap between um, those young people who aren't on universal credit and those that are? So, Josh, you're absolutely right. So, over one hundred and thirty. Uh, five youth hubs are now physically open and, and the conversation I had with uh, Rangers and Ibrox is that this is really filling this gap where people go if you're not necessarily you know in the government radar and that's why we can then bring those services whether it's housing addiction whatever's going on in the background why are you not visible there is a reason for that um, and that's why I was so keen when we had some of these across DWP which have been locally led to get them across all of DWP now I call job centres job centre plus jobs community progression because I know what happens in that building and the breadth of um, support and help you get you don't always need to go when you're in peril um, but you can go there to progress as well and that would be something that we'll be very much focused on going forward helping people to earn more and progress more uh, but we nearly really need to explain what's going on under the bonnet and the great way to have a soft landing into further support and government help and local help is these youth hubs for the under 25s you don't have to be on any kind of welfare or anything at all. You can go in there and have a cup of coffee and start chatting to people, get confident about the support you need and understand. And that's what we saw in Brighton. And that's what people are saying to me. This appears to be what we're looking for, that missing link of bringing together stakeholder engagement and support for young people to do government in a you know soft and engaging way way for young people and that starts with you know confidence and a cup of tea and somewhere to go and talk uh, and that's exactly what they're about um I know uh, our Chancellor is really supportive of them. I uh, was talking to the Chief Secretary to the Treasury yesterday. I said, you've got to come and see one there. Brilliant. Um, and I'm absolutely lobbying like heck uh, to keep them there because the feedback, not only from young people, but from partners about this is, you know, really bringing together the career services, the homes uh, services, the benefit services, the work coach services, you know, in a way that people might not feel confident enough to go into a job centre so that's what it's there for we're going to track very strongly those outcomes particularly for people who aren't on the radar how that we're getting them in and some of the stories are absolutely amazing uh, and we're, we're doing that very strongly because for me it is that crucial missing link that's why we want young people to know that about them and let's get that message out there that there is somewhere to, for you to go to get started on your journey you need the confidence and support to do that and we will get Give that to you. That's, that is so great to hear. We hear it all the time in our networks with young people about that holistic approach that somewhere they can go for, for a bit of everything. So, so that's great. Um, we've had another question come in, which is uh, really interesting, is how is feedback from young people received um, to improve the, the service delivery from work coaches? Now, I know you've done some work with us in the Youth Voice Forum on that, um, but just, just on a wider scale, how, how is that happening? 
Thanks, Josh. This has to be my last question because I've got to go to an Afghan resettlement event, so which is also something that DWP are very much on the front line and are very proud of. Um, in terms of the, your question, feedback and listening to young people is absolutely crucial. One of the best things that we've learned through Kickstart employers is all of the people that have come to us and said, you know what, we thought we were doing young people a favour by getting them in our business, by, you know, ripping up the recruitment and thinking, oh, we'll give some, you know, some young person a little bit of go and give them a bit of charity. Oh boy, have they learned Absolutely. They have learned way more from the young people, the understanding and the insight that young people have given their businesses, the way they've looked at things freshly. And they said, you know what? We haven't done anyone a favour. We've done ourselves a massive favour of getting young people in and getting that mixture of people in our workforce by ripping up the recruitment and they won't look back. So I think that's the key thing is get young people's voices and understanding into everything you do. You know, that's why I do the dial-ins and the engagement and the connection with all of our youth hubs. We have work coaches feeding back. We, you know, talk directly to our under-25s. We directly link those groups together so that we can absolutely hear from young people. But, you know, you can't make decisions for and about young people without their voices and their needs being at the heart of that. Admittedly, Kickstart's given me more grey hair and aged me more and all of this than, than anything. I feel the least youthful forever, uh, but absolutely keeping young people's opportunities at the heart of this, listening to them is key. Um, so, you know, please do feedback to me. You can easily do that, minister.employment at dwp.gov.uk. Give us a shout, tell us. And of course, through the youth employment group and, and the way that you've brought that amazing umbrella of, you know, I think nearly 200 organisations uh, for young people to give them a voice. We've been working directly with you and we'll continue to do that. Thank you very much, Minister. And I hear you only too well about the grey hairs over the last 18 months. I, 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 I feel that very strongly. Uh, and that is part of why today with this event, I am I'm co-hosting with uh, Josh as an apprentice and we've got young people co-hosting during the day as well. So important to have young people's voices shaping all of this. Now you have to go to your next meeting and we really thank you so much on behalf of Learning and Work and our uh, co-sponsors, uh, Impetus and the Edge Foundation, who are really going above and beyond for young people as well. So thank you very much, Minister. Thank and you. Have a great day and keep doing what you're doing. You're all fantastic. <laughs> Bye for now. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we're, I'm going to pass back over to Stephen now, who is going to take us into our first panel, looking at uh, the sort of what's happening in the regions and locally across the UK. Stephen.